was Monday, March 6th, work session to order. And before we start this evening, let's all stand and remember Councilwoman Lorraine Collins' father. <coughs> he passed away over the weekend, and that's why she's not here this evening. And uh, if anybody wants to know, council-wise, the viewing is tomorrow morning at St. Anne Church. Thank you. Okay, before we get started, I have a letter I'd like to read that was sent to me from uh, Mayor Joe DiGirolamo from Ben Salem <coughs> in regards to uh, us winning this small business revolution. It says, Ralph, congratulations. The borough is the best. I want you to know how much winning means to all of us here in Ben Salem. Mill Street is where I shop from the time I was a little boy in the 40s. Thanks for making us proud in Bucks County. Sincerely yours, Joe DiGirolamo, the mayor of Ben Salem. I just wanted to read one card. I've been getting people in Florida and people that used to live here and how proud they are to say that they were from Bristol people that live in Bristol but we really owe a, a great gratitude to Bill Passa who led this charge I mean if it wasn't for him <clears throat> basically I don't think we could have won this I mean his drive was unbelievable and the speech I gave Friday night down at the Wharf was I compared Bill to the great Jim Satilli and I said that in the 70s when in 1973 Bristol played Mid uh, Middletown and they were down 28 points in the third quarter and came back to win that game I don't know some of you younger guys remember that but then played Midland for the state championship and really got blown out but this small town stuck together and in 1975 we had the opportunity again to play Midland and Bristol won that game by one point and I haven't seen that much enthusiasm in a town since then since back in 1975 when Jim Satilli and he demanded nothing but excellent excellence out of his players and they all gave 150 percent that played for him and that's really what Bill Pezza did I mean, he demanded that everybody put out 150% to win this. And it's just a, a, a short version of the speech I gave Friday night. But we really, everybody in Bucks County deserves a thank you. Everybody in the country deserves a thank you to vote for us. But again, it was his drive and dedication that led us to the finish line. I mean, he put, he got us line and I give him a lot of credit but I haven't seen this much again enthusiasm in Bristol Borough since that 1975 championship with uh, coach Satoli so just wanted to put this into perspective how I feel all right anybody on this side of the room would like to speak on public participation go to the podium Brendan My name is Brendan Rappo. I reside at uh, 401 Lafayette Street. Um, before we get started, I need to apologize, make an apology to uh, Mr. Giuseppe. No, I, I made a phone call to him three weeks ago. Conversation got really heated, all the heat coming from me. So it was on call for, and I apologize. So I, I, I understand your later. frustration. Which leads me to why I'm here. Um, that night, about a half hour before I spoke to you, my sister was walking her dog and she was attacked, well, my, her sis, my sister's dog was attacked by a pit bull. <clears throat> now, it's not a first instance because I was walking the same dog and I was also attacked by the pit bull. Well, the dog was also attacked by the pit bull. Man, I'm nervous. Public speaking, right? Number one fear? Um, so right in my hand right here, I have 31 counts against this person 
that were brought against her. 31. All of them are pretty much dog at large, dog running at large, dog running at large. There's even one that has, that has proof of vaccination. <coughs> I mean, when, when is this, when's something going to happen with this? I've taken every measure. I've spoken to, I've called 911 probably about eight times. I've spoken to the police. The police have been at my house numerous times. And when I call 911, the police don't even come to my house right now anymore. They go right to the, around the corner to where the dog resides. I've spoken to Mr. DiGiuseppe. I've spoken to the, uh, Mr. Palmer, the dog catcher. I've spoken to the chief, chief of police. I've taken off from work. Okay, right now I'm at 10 hours of missing work because of this situation. I've went to court for this whole for this whole incident. Nothing's happened. The girl don't show up. Now I'm not saying I'm not trying to put the fault on anybody. But bless. I'm not trying to put the fault on anybody. But I need to know what. Where do I go from here? What can I do? Like when does a dog's rights trump a human's rights? I mean, this is this is it's ridiculous. I mean, I'm I'm I'm, I'm lost. That's why I'm here tonight. I'm glad you came. Yeah, I, mean, I know you from when you were a kid, and I know your family very well. And I said to you, I will continue to do whatever <coughs> I have to do to try to resolve this. Since we talked, she's been cited probably another five to seven times. The other day, the dog, my wife and granddaughter was walking, and the dog started <coughs> chasing them. And they had to run back into the house. Called Bill Palmer, my wife jumped in a car followed the dog who was in somebody's yard. We're prisoners. We're prisoners. It's like we're prisoners in our own yard. So, according to the Pennsylvania law, and we dealt with pit bulls before up here where we had a packed house, because I wanted to ban pit bulls in Bristol Borough. I don't know if you re remember, no, that. remember that. And everybody was against me because, you know, I think they're a dangerous dog. And I don't care who likes it and who doesn't like it. I know there's people that own pit bulls that say they're gentle. That's fine. But I know you can't single out a specific breed. So that's what everybody was against me for last time. But anyway, I talked to Bill Palmer. He came there. When he was ready to grab the dog, the dog ran back down the alley, <coughs> into the gate. They ran out, locked the gate, took the dog in the house. I watched the whole thing. I'm a witness to this whole thing. So they're cited again. So we have the Pennsylvania State Dog Commission, some, I forget her name, who I am now trying to find out, like you said, what is our rights? Do we have to wait until this dog literally hurts a kid? I mean, 30 sometimes she was found guilty. The other thing is you can't put a warrant out for her arrest on this kind of a fine. So if it was a traffic ticket, they could pick her up and arrest her. But on this kind of fine, she cannot be arrested. So everybody knows the system. So I'm not letting this go until this dog's removed or <coughs> something happens. And it's just a quest that I'm on right now. I'm dealing with the state. I'm dealing with the animal control officer. And I'm dealing with the police department. So this something has to be done. Because if something this dog <coughs> bites somebody, then we have a major problem. But they say a dog has to do something two or three times before you can put this dog down, which I think is ridiculous. I, I got a point here. Like, to be honest with you, I got nothing against pit bulls. I uh, really don't. I mean, and that's, that's that's your opinion. Right. You know? What about the owner? Okay, the owner should be should be held accountable. I mean, Are. That's why there being has to cited. be something that says that 31 times, I mean, that's like a Guinness record or something. Yeah. You see, and nothing, I sent you. And nothing's I, being done to the <coughs> dog. Like, I'm not saying go kill the dog. I'm really not. Like, don't, or just take it away from him. You I mean, can't. If she's that, if she's that. I know, Brandon. You know what I mean? Like, I hear you. Something's got to be done. We but it's got to be done immediately because if something happens, like you said, with, with a child, there's somebody just moved in right next door and they got three, three little kids. That are, that are out there constantly. I got family outside. on that street. I'm right there, Ralph. I'm right with I you. I know. Same word. They can't, they're afraid some days to get in their car. Yeah. I, I got to tell my daughter every time, run to the car. Okay, watch out for the dog. Oh. My neighbor, Miss Baripal, 
she got she got caught. She had to run back in the yard because of the dog. I ran out in my yard and told her to stay in the yard. Her son, the dog came by when her son was outside washing his car. Like, when when is this going to be enough? <coughs> like, it's it, it's very frustrating. It's very frustrating to be held captive in your own in your own. I agree, own home. and it's frustrating on on us as a borough <coughs> that we can't take this dog. We have no right to take this dog away. Bridget, she, uh, she uh, a, uh, uh, when uh, you said your sister, yeah, was she attacked or was she? No, the dog. When when the, when she when she when the dog came running up, yeah. the dog her dog then turned around and the dog bit my oh, sister's dog. Right. I, okay, now, okay. Now I got you. I didn't know, yeah. understand that at first. No. So like, I'm just curious as to Ralph. When you say like, you know, if, if the dog is involved in an incident, obviously if a dog's walking around, that's not an incident. It should be dealt with. But if the dog attacks another dog, that I would think that's an incident, right? I mean, here's, is that, is that how here's, the, here's the, and anybody, <coughs> I could print Sorry. it, give this to anybody. This you could pull up online. It's got everything about how many times she was, she was charged or whatever, found guilty. There's just page, like Brendan said. 31. There's pages and pages and pages of the, it's not like we're not doing our job. Yeah. We don't have a right to take this dog. Now, no we, matter if it was a pit bull or not. Application and dog and dog fees license. I don't know like the the, the laws with that or uh, proof of vaccination. Like, don't you have to? Don't you have to have those? Okay, because she's not. She don't have none of that. And we cited. And it, and you, we, she was cited for that. Yeah. So, like, it, does anybody else feel that this is just totally absurd? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Brendan, subsequent to I guess your problem, my wife and I are walking. From the path up from Mill Street, we usually go down to Jefferson Avenue. We got to Lafayette Street, and my wife says, uh uh, mm -hmm. we're not going any further. There were two dogs at large. Now they're just out there. Now, when people say, my dog doesn't bite, and there was nobody around, yeah. but I've been uh, bit twice making deliveries by dogs that never bit anybody before, so yeah. I don't listen to people when they say that dog doesn't bite. We walked down back to Lafayette Street, or Washington Street there and walk, walked away from it. I called when I got home, I called Bill Palmer. I said, oh, because there was a man walking from Jefferson Avenue. These dogs started jumping on him. If it had been me, my wife, we'd have died because these dogs were, you know, they're big dogs. Yeah. And there's nobody around. They're jumping on the guy and then finally they let him by and he continued his walk. But when I called Bill Palmer, he was right there on it. But he, when he called me back, he said it was the 35th fine that he's written for that lady now to me that's ridiculous something's got to be something's got to give if if they're being so cavalier that they don't put their dogs on a leash then we should press as hard as we can Half, to, I thought, to, I know, thought to, once to, the dog to stop this problem another dog, it had to be put in quarantine yeah. anyway for some time now well yeah my grandson got bit last has, year has this dog this 31 times a judge has found this person guilty 21 times until she fair fine and she just pleads guilty or they combine things she was charged a couple times $500 fines but if you don't pay him that what the, the court is saying is we can't put a warrant out for our arrest because the way this the way it's written you can't arrest somebody for this type of but the judge has Can't that dog be considered a lethal weapon? <clears throat> well, I'm having the state girl come to a meeting. I asked, I, I talked to the animal control officer, and I requested that she attends a meeting publicly to explain, and I want to show her this, why something, why we cannot do anything when this dog, was, this lady was cited this many times. Is this a rental property or is it an owner? And I was going to notify <laughs> what kind of property this? <laughs> First of all, it's considered a nuisance property. Right. Okay, they're nuisance owners. They just moved in. But they own the building, I'm saying? No. no. They don't. There's an older gentleman that owns the build that, that owns it and lives there. And these people kind of just moved their way in. I don't know the relation to them, but it's pretty much, it's a drug house. Right. And I'm just thinking out loud, I probably shouldn't do that. <coughs> I just don't know if there's any recourse to the, can we not renew to the, the person that owns the, license? the property. Oh, it's not a rental. No, they just moved in. Just, just move, like, kind of like, you know, move over. I'm coming in. Animal control officer 
captures this dog, he can take control of that dog. The state well, saying it's, it's not a dangerous dog. If it's running loose, you cite him. Okay. If it's not tagged. It's not tagged. Doesn't cite have a license. Everything you're saying has been done. He cited him. We're up to date on the show. Running loose, no tags, no I vaccination. No. How, how about the owner of the house? If it's if it's somebody who just not even running, they're just going into the house. She owns the he dog. He lives there with them. Well, that's what I'm saying. What, why can't we? Can we do why can't we put the pressure on on this guy yeah. who, who lives there, who owns the house? We could try. I mean, yeah. I don't know if we have a legal right. He's in his 80s. Yeah. I mean, well, it's I not that it gives him an excuse, but... No, it does, but it's still not right. I, mean, know, I mean, he's 80 and... It, and I bad, said to Brendan, I mean, the last time we thought we definitely had her, I asked him to take off of work, go to the hearing, and we were going to do whatever we had to do at that hearing. He did, mm -hmm. and they didn't show up. Yeah. So the judge finds him. Five hundred dollars. That day you didn't show up, she was fined five hundred dollars. The day I didn't show up? No, the day they didn't show up. Oh, that you yeah. were there. They yeah. remember you said nothing. They did say cite nothing her. Nothing happens. She paid a five hundred. She didn't pay it. No, yeah, well, I mean, she she can go, she'll go down there and pay twenty bucks, and then you know, be good for what, two, three, four weeks, and then go back and pay another twenty. That's but easy. again, I mean, bags of dope. this isn't getting pushed aside. I am going to stay on top of this, do whatever I can within the law. I mean, there's... So what, what, what can I, right now, I walk out of, this door, out of this building, what can I do to protect myself? Nothing. Oh, that's that's cool. the sad part. Bro. You know, I wish I could tell you something you different. Like, the only thing we could do is see, call. You see, you see the only that, thing and we, I'm, not, I'm not laughing because I, the only I'm laughing because I'm frustrated. The thing we can do is cite them. Because you see, like the and and nothing against you, but you're 100 percent correct. I'm laughing because it's like this is a joke. Okay, we're we're, we're talking about human lives that are that are at, at stake. Mainly my daughter. Yeah. Okay, just like your granddaughter. All right. You know, and the answer I get is nothing. No, not not we could cite them. I, and that's okay, what we've been we're doing. Not, I, no, I, I mean, and I'm not I'm not getting angry at you. All right. I'm. I'm I'm very That's frustrated great. and You're very angry at this whole situation. You live and next you, door I'm told though. that I can't do nothing to protect myself and my family. Well, if the dog there's attacks always, you, there's you always could. something that you could do. Yeah, okay, there is. And then guess where the no. first place they're going to come? <laughs> But I, I mean, that's like Tony said. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I can't tell you what to do, but you got to protect your your daughter and your sister and your mother and everybody else. But there are people that are living in fear on that street that I have to deal with. There was a lady on 2nd or 3rd Avenue that had a pit bull. And time after time, the same, dealt with this every day. She used to come home from work, and they had the pit bull in front of the house and with a little stake in the ground. She would sit in her car and cry until they took the dog in. Because on the avenues, you got to go up the same set of steps. Right, right. So I got so tired, I went there with the chief, Chief Porter. And we went in and tried to talk. And they said, oh, this dog doesn't bite and this and that. All of a sudden, here comes the dog, lunges at Porter, rips his pants, his pants, and I'm outside already holding the door closed. So when people say they don't, it's forget well, about it. this dog bites? Because it attacked right. the dog, attacked my sister's dog twice. And it it tried to attack Do you know what they else. consider a dangerous dog? I'm, re I'm trying to read about that right now. I know we dealt with all this before. Yeah, I think it has to be on a human. On a human, right. Now, I've never been asked to look at this situation. I'll certainly do that. Um, what if it bites somebody? Well, that's what we're looking I'm going to have. Like, are they gonna, is that, does that then change the, the whole rule? But it shouldn't have to come to that. It should not have yes, to. It does. My sure, grandson, sure, sure, my grandson grandson here. I'm just trying, to, I'm trying to figure out something. I might yeah. get somebody over that I don't like I to sacrifice them in order for the law to get changed. I totally understand. My grandson was bit in the face last year. A scar. He's only four now, and he can't go near animals, and he hangs out around Lafayette Street. So I, I'm ready to text my street's getting a bad name. Yeah, like, <laughs> but um, no, it shouldn't have to come to that. Definitely. No, it should. Yeah, it should, but that, that's where, that's where, that's probably where it's going to end up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I'm getting, I'm getting, no, nothing can be done. 
Well, I mean, we could enforce the, f the fence. They, have, they don't have the right fence. We could enforce that. Maybe John Miller can go out. Yeah, now the dog's there getting loose. Something. The dog's getting loose through the gate. Well, that's, yeah, we're pretty and sure. That's what they're citing the, the owner for. I, I believe on this dangerous dog act that once a dog has bitten a person twice, at that point, <laughs> it has you have twice. to have a dog house, you have to have a specific chain, you have to have a specific collar for the dog, and you well, have to go to your insurance you company, have to get shot twice. and you have to have <laughs> liability. Which did not be. Fair. But that's... But you, did you... I didn't, I didn't realize what you just said, but... When, it, when the dog bites a human twice. Right. Like, so you, well, like, not our law. No, I get it. No, I, I totally understand. I totally understand. But do you, does everybody hear this? And yeah. like, I, I'm getting yeah, more, all I get more frustrated. We've been, and it's like, like, like he just said, you know, if you get shot twice, you have to be shot three times. You know, like, no, that's kind of, you, know, you know what I mean? It, it well, just doesn't the seem The only way we can right. bring, the only thing I could say is we need to bring this, we have to follow whatever laws that the state puts on us it's just like if you arrest somebody you have to follow the guy no, and I, I get that so, so we're doing what it. can i do i don't want to lie to you i'm telling you right now the only thing you do is keep citing this girl until the judge starts hitting her with major fines i'm sure he's maxing the fines out right now and in the meantime i'm trying to get the state in here to see if we could do something mr mayor do we have the wherewithal like does our does our dog um, animal control does he have the tools necessary to be able to Absolutely. if he had to, to capture take care of this pit bull yeah. he would yeah. and we have a we have a kennel down yeah. at the down here I mean if we, I was always under the impression that if the dog is habitual out there running we can grab him put him down there for a couple days but then if they don't have a license or, or that I was also under the impression until they get their license and prove that they have a shot. <coughs> but, you know, that we can, we can even charge it. <coughs> Let me I tell think, you. I what? think Bill Palmer said that if he knows who owns the dog, he has to take, he has it, to back. take it back. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's a lot. Actually, he's, 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 he's mentioned myself. that to me. Now, this is, That's why it's next to me. What me is, to me, it's a dangerous dog. If, if he doesn't have his shots, and they allow him to continually run unleashed. Say I'm running on Huh? So you didn't recognize <coughs> Changes I you, When I was building the homes on Maple Street, <coughs> there was a pit bull in the yard next door. And I knew this dog eventually was going to do something. It finally broke through a wooden stockade fence and grabbed the landscaper and was, you know, they beat this dog down. The dog ran back in the house. Palmer came, took the dog to the kennel. The, they had to feed this dog. The cops didn't want to go in, so they put a shovel in to dump the food. He snapped the handle of a, of a shovel. <laughs> right? Now, we were supposed to give the dog back because it has to happen twice. <laughs> but the owner was afraid of the dog and ended up signing a paper to put the dog down. If not, we would have to give that dog back. Boy, so that's what I'm saying. But again, I think something has to get done, and we're going to stay on top of it. Does that same choice? Does the person have to die twice too for, for you know, something really major put in the law? Yeah, <clears throat> Rap, I, I think what I'm hearing from you, I understand like your frustration. Everybody does. I think for me, what I'm hearing from you is, what can I do? I'm going to tell you what I would do in in that situation. Is that I would make sure that it's the owner that's getting fined. See if that whoever that guy is. Keep checking with the borough. Make sure it's the owner of that building, not the girl, because it sounds like she could get fined a thousand times. She right. could pay ten dollars right. a month for the rest of her life, and it wouldn't affect her. Find out if it's the owner, and then that's you know if we could put me. We got to make whoever is going to be responsible financially. They got to get hit first, because that's what's going to motivate you know whoever that is. That's the first thing. And then while that's happening, like like Ralph said. They're going to be, you know, they're going to be calling the, the state and finding out, getting that woman in here to find out exactly what to do. But to me, individually, you know, we can't tell you. No, no, I got to do. Back you know what I mean? But I mean, I, that's my, that's what I would say for you. I'll look at it from 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 our end with the police chief it. and and Mr. Palmer along with Mr. D. Giuseppe and see what else if, if there's anything else from the police end that we can do. 
and then work with Mr. DiGiuseppe with the state to try to get them in here as soon as we can. Joe, maybe you can, uh, or the chief may have better luck getting the state to get back to you tomorrow, the next yeah, day. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to them. Give Bill Palmer. Okay. I got the girl's name and phone number written down. Okay. Maybe coming from the chief, if they'll respond to him faster. But I'm trying to get her into a meeting to explain right. what we can do. And I was going to have Brendan come here to explain how he's, how him and his family have to live. Well, let's get oh, hey, come my neighborhood. Yeah, the neighborhood. It's just me and the family. It's, it's, you know I mean? know you'll come. I don't know if anybody else. Will. Just let me know when. I need a little bit of time. Like we can. We can but it'll be at night. That's why I work. At, I work at night. Oh, all right. Two. Can we find a homeowner rather than the home? Uh, the yeah, look yeah. into that. I think that John could go out tomorrow, and we talked about this for the last few weeks. Start enforcing different codes. <laughs> now, again, I don't know if you could so cite the homeowner, if you can't cite, I don't know. Well, the fence issue, I believe you can. If he's, there's a dog there, he's required to have a certain fence and security. He's responsible for that if he's living there. I, I need to talk to the uh, the dog enforcement officer. Yeah. Well, here's all this. Here's all the citations. I promise you, I, I will stay on top of this. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I'll let you know Thanks, what's going on. Thanks, guys. All right, Brendan. Thanks. Thanks. Anybody else on this side of the room want to speak on anything? Did a good job speaking, rapping. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Thomas Barrett, live at 913 Garden Street, and just wanted to talk about the lot where the guy got shot down in zoning. Right. That has his camper set up. Still. <coughs> um, I talked to the lawyer that was here with him um, during the zoning hearing, and uh, a couple of the other neighbors expressed interest in perhaps buying the lot from him, and I mentioned it to him. Um, after thinking about it, we just wanted to do like a, a community garden there. Um, everybody wanted to pitch in and get in there and do their own thing. Uh, wildflowers and and just to get it off the market so that somebody else doesn't come in there and try and do the same thing right live in a tent uh, on the end of my street um, but uh, and then I thought about it and I'm like I don't want to pay the taxes every year for a wildflower garden right um, so I wanted to know if there was interest in maybe the borough uh, we would assume responsibility for maintenance um, if the borough would be interested in purchasing the lot from the Wow, well, I think how we left it that <coughs> night at the meeting is there's 45 day appeal process. Am I correct, Bill? Once the written decision, they have 40. No. Once the decision is issued, they have 45 days to issue a decision, then the applicant has 30 days to appeal it. So right. nothing can be done enforcement wise until that appeal period runs. All right, so once this appeal process is over and I know me and Councilman Gerard was at that zoning meeting yeah. and Thank you for I said to, to Dave that, whatever you want to do I told Dave he had my support on this issue if you guys wanted to buy it as residents that would be fine if not I'm sure council will support Mr. Gerard in the borough purchasing the, the ground taking the fence down and create something there. Uh, okay. We don't ever want to see anything built on that property. Right. I just don't understand why the neighbor wouldn't buy that piece of property for the amount of money that we talked about. I personally don't think, I'm not right. them, but I don't think they can afford even that. <laughs> um, it seems like the smart thing to do, um, honestly. Um, but yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Well, we. I don't think we can. I mean, can we notify this guy that we're interested? But I don't want it to look like we turned him down, and therefore now we want to buy his pro. It's a but the lawyer. Keep, the lawyer keeps emailing back and forth to me. <coughs> well, you could tell him that you know, if the guy wants to sell the property, to send a letter to the borough that the borough will be interested in purchasing it. Okay. Yeah, he's waiting to hear. Um, 
that, that price was 2500 right? Is that correct? <laughs> he didn't give me a price. He he paid two for it, oh, from two. what I understand. And but, he'll take two? But I don't know what he's going to take. He's uh, asking he's... for he's asking for an offer. The lawyer is asking for an offer. He, I think he thinks I'm with the borough, well, not I just mean, a resident. As far as I'm property. concerned, we'll give him back the money that he's, he's got invested in. Right. That's Well, yeah, that's, I mean, I'm, I mean, sure, he's, I'm sure he's going to look for that because he went out and bought all the landscaping and, you know, trying to hide everything he was doing. Right. He was well, trying, to plant, was he was trying to plant there? buffer bushes around the outside to kind of keep it more private. Yeah. So, you know. What, Tom, what was his plan over there? What did they want to do? What he was, was going to live in his camper. And put walls and, around and it. And then put and a <laughs> house around his camper. Well, this is what he told the zoning board. I don't think he had intention on doing that personally. Uh, okay. but, uh, he was made well aware, to my knowledge, from what I was told about the paperwork when he bought the property from Phil, that Phil wrote in there. And this is what, one of the things I questioned at the zoning meeting. I asked him if he was told of any <coughs> thing that he couldn't do when he bought it. And he said no to the zoning board. But he was. It was written down that everything was tried. Phil tried building garages on it, tried building houses on it in the past, and that everything was shot down. It was not a buildable lot. So he bought it knowing that, and then tried to do this anyway. Okay. Um, I, I had talked to him a couple different times. I had taken pictures when he was setting up his camper and his tents and everything else down there, and. Um, he even put a mailbox outside. He even put a mailbox. He was he was he was actually in the process of filing to have electricity brought onto the property. He was looking into water and sewer, but yet saying that he wasn't going to be living in the camper. Um, so I. Uh, you, know, you heard me at the zoning meeting. So. And he was reading all the uh, the the the, uh, the rules for the borough on the website, trying to figure out what he could do. To get around everything, right. like the little words that weren't in there. I would just what I would do is give him Mr. <coughs> Dillon's email and just have him email the borough if the, you're dealing with the attorney. Yeah. And just say, you know, notify the borough that you're interested in selling, and I think Jim could take it from there, and then he could come back to council and say, this is the deal. I mean, I think we purchase the property first if the price is right, right, and then determine how what we want to do with it. Okay, all right, that sounds so. good. I'll I'll email him and uh, I'll give him Mr. Dillon's email and uh, have him get in touch with him. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. All right, thank you. Anybody else on this side of the room? Hi, Shay Chala, uh, Porter Avenue. Um, I'm actually representing the Bristol Borough Business Association. Um, I coordinate First Fridays on the Delaware. And um, you guys actually asked me to come. I mean, I can tell you all about First Fridays, but I don't know if you actually had something you wanted to ask Well, me. I think what we wanted to do, Shay, was uh, officially last year we had to close Mill Street. Mm -hmm. And I think we just want to make it more official this year that you're requesting that Mill Street be closed. The same process that we used last year. Uh, you got to go through Merle for <coughs> everything that happens down there, and he pretty much works with uh, Jose to get all this done. And I think uh, instead of just Mr. Dillon making, we all know how great First Friday is and how great, <coughs> how successful it is, and everybody likes working with, with you and your committee. Thank you. But I just want to put it on the agenda for Monday night that we're authorizing uh, this to take place because we do have. There's cost involved with police and all the things that are involved. So insurance purposes, we don't want it to come back to say, why is the uh, manager authorizing this without council's approval? So the reason I asked Shay to come in, not to try to sell the program, just so council's aware of, that we're all aware of what's going on. Okay. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, we do. Um would like the, the street close as we have previously as we saw from the first year it didn't work with the street open um, so I do appreciate that uh, we did previously have um, in last year the second year um, the uh, 400 300 and 200 um, blocks closed um, but the 100 block of Mill Street was left open and I'm not I don't know exactly why and I never asked honestly why that 100 block was left open um, so I'm actually requesting that that be closed as well because what is happening is that um, 
when the 100 block is um, I think I left it over there. The 100 block is left uh, open. You can come down Cedar Street, make the left on the 100 block of Mill, and then make the left onto the 100 block of Radcliffe. You can't park on those two blocks, and so I'm not really sure why the through traffic can come. But then when people are walking up from the wharf, and you know everyone gathers at the wharf, and there's a lot of people on the street and at the wharf, but they walk up the hill, they're not using the sidewalk. Um, it just is natural. You're just walking up from the wharf. You're using that hill, and now they're in the middle of the street, but the street's open. And then you have the vendors on the sidewalk, which now is you know it's it's okay with, but now there's not that too much room for the people who are walking up, and it's just not it's just not safe. Um, and then the people who are walking down from the 400, 300, 200 block are. But I'm trying to keep people on the sidewalk, but I can't control everybody. So, you know, so they're walking in the street, which is fine because the road's closed. But then they get to the 100 block, and even though I had posted, you know, signs that said, please beware, road is now open, they're still walking in the street. So now they're walking in the street and the cars are still coming down. There's not a tremendous amount of cars, but there are enough that, you know, um, we had people posted there to try and help with the traffic, which then led to the whole, we're not trained traffic control people or pedestrian safety people or whatever the term is I my so. suggestion <laughs> is <laughs> say that again <laughs> <laughs> and I did talk with the restaurants and with the bank and with um, the theater they are all okay if the borough approves the 100 block of Radcliffe and Melbourne I always hang my hat on whatever decision Merle makes I don't think we try. I don't think we try to really overrule his decisions because okay. we have that much faith in him. So I think Merle, you meet with her, come back to council, and make it. We got till May. I think May fifth is the first one. Correct. So we have time to make this decision. Merle can meet with you and the chief and the fire chief. And again, without, I mean, unless council wants to overrule this, yeah. but I I believe that. I trust Merle's decision to I think we came to the conclusion anyway to shut the street down because we were having so many people walking in the street because of the vendors right. so it was a safety issue as far as not only adults but kids mm -hmm. so on, when they're walking down the street it's just and there's just a lot of people there's just I mean even if they all were walking on the, the sidewalk they, you couldn't fit I mean luckily I mean it's been a successful event so it's very, just very successful yeah there's just event. too many people um, on all of the blocks, which is great. Yeah. Well, so. Louis, uh, <coughs> I think I, I would make a suggestion that if you're going to close the 100 block of Ratcliffe Street off, which means now that the parking lot, you can't get to Ratcliffe Street through the parking lot. So I just think you should have some <coughs> signs made up. One that once you're in the parking lot, you have to. Yeah, well, you can't get you. That's blocked off anyway. Um, we we block off the end of the wharf. Okay. We should, we should say that the parking lot is, once you're in, you have to exit the same way you came in. Gotcha. But the other thing is we should ha have signs up that say, either for Rat the detour, the first Friday detour, use Mulberry Street to get to Ratcliffe Street, or just continue down Old 13 to Pond Street. But you have to remember that sometimes people are coming in from out of town, and if, if you get there and all of a sudden it's closed, you know, then they, they're tapping on their brakes, looking at every, you know, they're, they're looking where they can go. Yeah. So I just think if we're going to have, you know, just have direction we're going to have five or six first Fridays. I think you, you should invest. In, <coughs> yeah. Maybe even the borough can help out on that. Yeah. Well, we work on signage that. for. We work along with you, you know. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Yeah, but I mean, we should just make sure that people know. Are aware of what. But I agree with you. Once you, if you get cars coming up from the wharf and. and Last week showed us that everybody wants to come down, even the Sunday before the announcement. That was packed down there at the wharf because it's a nice day and people just want to see what's going on. So yeah, no, exactly. So I think if we have that closed and plan on it, and then if the docks are if the docks are open by then, which they should be, hopefully, it's just I don't think people realize how much activity these docks and all the things that are happening in this town right now is going to do for this town. Yeah, and and with that being said, we do. I do realize that um, the the setup that we had had previously down there won't work because we had we kind of blocked it off. So we're not going to do that. We're going to um, and it got too congested right there. It was just too much there. And again, our focus is to bring people 
to the four blocks of where the businesses are. I don't, we have lovely events that are very successful and great at the wharf. People go to the wharf naturally. It's going to happen. I'm really not focused on the wharf because th th Which people go there anyway. Exactly. Yeah, we have really four <coughs> blocks. So we're going to move the, um, the music over to the, um, the gazebo. And then people who want to enjoy that can sit in that grass area there. And then and, and then that, that part in front of the, the cement part in front of the wharf will be more open. We'll have a table or two for the community art project, but there'll still be plenty of room to stand and walk and, and move through. Before, I just want to make a suggestion now, because we dealt with this last year, and I was involved with all the doctor off, doctor's offices on Mill Street, that they're aware now. I'm going out this because week. Because they're scheduling patients. Yes on them so I would make them aware now that yes these are the dates for first Friday because you know people schedule visits a month or two in advance my goal is to get to every business on that area in Soon. the next two weeks right yes if I, if I could just say I certainly trust Merrill as well but I only foresee this event getting bigger with yes, the, you know how great it was last year and then all the publicity we've been getting and I think having both the 100 of mill and and Rapid Food would definitely benefit the event. You know, I don't know the logistics, I don't know the yeah. safety controls, but in well, the another, sense of the event, I agree with you 100%. And, and another point is that the more businesses that open on Mill Street, it's wonderful. The less vendor spaces I have, therefore the less income, and then I don't have enough money to actually, you know, fund the event. So I'm not saying that I'm going to put vendors on Radcliffe Street, but it will, the putting them on, on the 100 block of Mill at least will give me, because with the, if you're on the sidewalk, you have, you know, to jut it out, door right here, and it's something block in there, and this and that, and you, you can only put a handful of vendors there. So <laughs> this will, you know, give me some more opportunity to make some income to cover this event. How about coming in off the old 13 there? If somebody comes down the 400 block of Mill Street, they make their way to go down, they can park down there, and then if they want to leave, they can go out off the of Maple Beach Road or wherever right. it is and, and come up that way. That way, you're, you're not going down that whole area at all. Because you're going to have uh, those, those, those restaurants are opening up soon down at the corner there, the old stock, so that's going to draw more of a crowd as well. You think they're going to be open? He said, when are you done by May? That's what he said. <coughs> I hope so. Not things happening. <laughs> Well, just for um, like Louie said, Tony, put a sign as soon as you come down saying you have to exit the same way you entered. Yeah, yeah. Because the, yeah, they'll be allowed out of towners as opposed to you know well, yeah, people who are here now. Even from town, you think you can get out? Yeah. Mill Street or Wood Street or whatever, you're not going to get out. Okay. So Merle, why don't you you know let us know what you you and Shay get together and Jose and see what you guys figure out. All right. And I just want to point out that um, we are looking for sponsorships. If anyone who owns a business or just has left some money they want to give away, we do have sponsorship packages. Um, and we're going to do it um, a little bit different uh, a couple of the months because, you know, although it's great, it's fun, we have some free stuff for the family and kids, you know, five events every year with the same thing year after year is kind of, you know, monotonous. So we're going to have themed events. Um, June will be uh, Carnival. July will be Christmas in July, and August will be Pirate Nautical. That's so um, it's going to be really fun. So we'll have different entertainment. The businesses will include, you know, we'll do some, like scavenger hunt or something. There are a lot of great um, ideas from, you know, the committee. <coughs> it's going to be good. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else on this side of the room? His size for like four people. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Crystal. Uh, I want to pit you back on the uh, first Friday, uh, the traffic. Uh, Mill Street's a state road, and uh, as volunteers, we're not supposed to be out there controlling or directing traffic. Uh, they mandate that you attend classes. You're required to wear uh, a safety vest, also. So. We're just going to have to use uh, traffic cops. Uh, my big, biggest concern uh, is Pond Street. I would just love to shut down. I'll just I'll talk to Merle about that. But uh, there's too much traffic coming across Pond Street, on across Mill Street, and there's just too many people that are not paying attention. You got you kids mean on skateboards. Pond going to Old 13. I'm talking about Pond crossing Mill Street, going down towards um, uh, the ice cream. Yeah, Let's go to the hot. Crossing the streets this way. Yeah, yeah. Cross you want to shut them down too? I want to shut it down on Market Street because it's, it's a disaster and it's a, it's, a, it's an accident waiting to happen. The the crowds are getting bigger, and once there's a 
Bernie just opened up, let's go to the hop. But the people are milling around the streets, and then you have cars on pond crossing Mill Street, and you can't control, you can't control what happens down in that parking lot. And uh, during the car show, all them streets are shut down for the car show, and that's an eight-hour event. You can't cross on pond, you can't come up wood, and you can't cross down Cedar Street. Uh, I don't, this, this is confusing to me. Are you kidding? <laughs> But uh, and our event's three hours, maybe four with the setup time and everything. But if we can shut that street down for eight hours for a car show, I don't so you're saying comes. pond, wood, cedar, oh. anything that crosses you. But well, that's what they do for the car show for eight hours. It's shut down. Wood and cedar are okay. I mean, not that's cool, fine too. That's right, right, but then you're going to have you, you have to have tra traffic police. We're not yeah. authorized. Why don't we just discuss this in a oh, uh, that's fine. In yeah. a conference room? Yep, that's fine. Yeah. So, uh, then I'll just move on to um, a couple cleanups that are going to be happening. We have the uh, canal cleanup on April 8th from 9 to 12. Uh, the rain date will be uh, the 9th. Last year, I didn't have a rain date and actually rained a little bit on, uh, on Saturday, but we decided to have it anyway. Uh, this, is the, um, this is the annual cleanup from east to west. So we're going to meet uh, at 9 o'clock. People can park at the parking lot, the Amtrak parking lot. What's that date again? Uh, I mean, April, April, April 9 to 12. Uh, all supplies uh, will be, uh, we'll have supplies, cleaning supplies. Uh, we always have uh, high school students, and uh, Heather Katrosha does a great job. Uh, they get involved, they can get involved with tree plantings, cleanups. Uh, we had it, when we were getting ready for the visit from the small business revolution, we were out there in the snow, three or four inches of snow. Uh, Lou was out there. Uh, it's just an amazing thing to get them inv involved, and, and they really enjoy it. Uh, so that's that's uh, April 8th. Um, something pretty cool happened today. I was going to schedule the Keep Bristol Beautiful cleanup that we have yearly. This would be the third year. And uh, somebody shared a poster on Facebook that a new business on Mill Street took it upon themselves to schedule a town-wide Bristol cleanup through the same uh, Keep Keep America Clean uh, Clean program we use for our for our uh, Keep Bristol. So it's pretty cool that a new business, new people come into town, uh, and this is something they want to do. So I'll contact them tomorrow. I'm not going to I'm not going to set my date up. Uh, I'll talk to them. We'll work together, and uh, I'll come back hopefully uh, next Monday and let you know uh, uh, how we're going to uh, get together and do that. So it's, it's a good thing people come into town. There's a revolution going on. Get this T-shirt at IDs by hand for 12 bucks, <laughs> all sizes. So it's uh, it's just a good time, really. It's just it's a great time to be a, a, a Bristol resident, really. It's it is. Proud of all the efforts of everybody, you guys in the uh, uh, raising bar and everybody. So, so that's it. So Couldn't do it unless we we're all working together. You have to work together. I know we have a small element. Uh, I don't understand it, but they're not on board with it, and that's their choice. That's fine, but. Uh, they, they benefit from what's going on too, you know. And if we can have people from the outside coming in, starting businesses, getting involved, and uh, it's their choice, you know, which is fine. But uh, we'll just continue on, and that's uh, we're not stopping. We're just going to keep I making Bristol that's the best, the best Bristol we can. We don't need to be any other town. We appreciate what everybody, uh, all the other towns, helped us out with the voting. Uh, and the big thing is, Bristol was beat down for years. You know, we were looked down. Marsville, Croydon, and. Uh, so things are changing. It's a lot right. better to have this Bristol than the old Bristol from 20, 30, 40 years ago. Right now, this town's on fire, Jose. It is on fire, yes. Yeah, that's why we have four or five companies, just in case it gets too hot, we can put out the fire. <laughs> <laughs> right, so hopefully I'll see you guys Monday, and uh, maybe I'll bring the owner of that business in. We'll, yeah. we'll Thank you. Right? All right. You guys have a great night. Hey. I think everybody's done on this side. I would have started on the left. You would have been out of here an hour ago. <laughs> Next time, sit on the right. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Fred Baumgarten, and I want to come uh, before you this evening to discuss the uh, approximately third of an acre <coughs> that is the intersection of Canal Street uh, and Washington Street. It's where the old powerhouse used to be. It is now being turned into a uh, parking lot. And that transformation is virtually complete, except for the landscaping, which we are, we've had 
uh, to wait for favorable weather. Uh, there have been a number of revisions in the specifications, and I'm here this evening to request an additional <coughs> revision. This is, uh, there are strips of of soil along Washington Street <coughs> and along Washington <coughs> Street, about two feet wide, that is next to the curb that will uh, be for grass, very much in line with the uh, Washington Street towards the trains from the canal towards the train station, the same width. On the other side of the sidewalk, from uh, along Canal Street and along Washington Street is a wider strip of soil. And the specifications currently call for uh, planting 53 bushes, 44 yews, and nine junipers. That will act as something of a border there. And I think that it's going to look very nice. In addition to that, the specifications call for the planting of uh, trees, eight trees in the, uh, this <coughs> area, six along Canal and Washington Street, and two in the middle of the parking lot. I come before you this evening to request a favorable consideration that uh, instead of planting the eight trees, uh, I install a black iron fence along Canal Street and along Washington Street, uh, similar, very similar or identical to what is in other areas like uh, Canal Works. Uh, my motivation is strictly aesthetic. I think that it's going to look nicer um, and it will be more period authentic. Right along the canal. You're putting iron back there too. So uh, I was not planning to. I think that would give it a fenced-in look. That would almost like a, a, a pen. Uh, I had planned to not put fencing there. That is part of my. Suggestion. So the fence is down. That was back there, correct? And part of it is down, and uh, it will be entirely removed. So you're not worrying about anybody just walking all the way. The path onto your property. Uh, I'm concerned about it, and there are security measures uh, to monitor that. But <coughs> no, I do not plan on having any kind of a fence. I mean, the, the fence that's on Canal Works is is a beautiful fence. I mean, if you walk along the canal and you see the black iron and all, I mean, it's really or out on Beaver Street. Hello. So I mean, I mean, I don't, you know, I have no problem with it. I like to speak to my uh, neighbors about how they how they feel. I don't know how council feels, but I mean, I know you, so far he did a beautiful job, and I'm not opposed to you know plants versus trees. I mean, trees eventually are nothing but problems for the bird to pick up leaves and everything else. So I don't know. I don't know how anybody feels. Dave? I have something I'd like to show you to. Uh, <coughs> This is the type of fence that I'm referring to. I think we're all looking with it. Yes. Can you bring it up? Yeah. Sure. Why don't you go to Greg and Tony first and then. You don't get it. So that's okay.
still be about four and a half times in time. There'll be footage uh, in time. So it's something that is uh, permanent. To do, that's all. Well, it's got to go on the agenda for Monday night to amend the land development. Anybody opposed to what Fred wants to do? Uh, I, I think. Excuse me, Ben. No, that's okay. Okay, Dave. Um, I, I think in your packet you explained it perfectly. You, you, you want to plant, you can't plant trees on crushed concrete. The, 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 the roots won't take hold. There's no soil down there. It's just, uh, and, and the fence, uh, fence is, is uh, you know, a good way to go with it. Since the trees, I think the trees, like you say, won't, won't root directly. So, does anybody oppose well, putting on the agenda? No, and I, I think the way you're matching it to Canal Works, it just shows, you know, it, it's going to look beautiful no matter what. And There'll be a certain consistency, not only with the period of the architecture, but also continuity of the Yeah, and I think that's just going to improve that area tremendously, so I really do appreciate all your effort. Thank you. All right, so we'll make it an agenda item for Monday. <coughs> Just on another note before Mr. Bongard leaves, I just, I was going to wait until the chief was here, but I wanted to thank the chief and the manager and the mayor. Now that the turnpike bridge is closed, we've got some crazy traffic patterns in town, some trucks, tractor trailers trying to go up or down Lafayette Street. You know, they've got, they get jackknifed in the middle, and, um, and Fred reached out to me and said that, He's been trying to make all his people aware when they leave that they shouldn't go down Washington Street. But he even said, if we, had some, if we went into his yard and had some suggestions and wanted to put signage there, it, we had his permission. So I just, I just know that Fred has always been working with us at the bar. The lot looks beautiful there. Yeah, and, uh, and this fence just enhances it. But, also, you've been a really community-minded person running a big business out of there and trying to control. And sometimes it's out of his hands, you know, you can tell your tenants as much as you want which way to go. And sometimes it's a source of frustration for him, but he's out there doing it to make it easier for us. So I thank <coughs> him. I thank the manager and the chief and the mayor for their all their diligence during this tough time with the bridge being out. Thanks, Fred. Kirby. Uh, just a couple things. One is uh, we've received four of the, the new Motorola radios that were being purchased with the, uh, the Redevelopment Authority grant. Second thing is that the, um, the fire emergency medical services units, uh, we put in a grant for the Evizio auto injectors for the uh, opioid overdoses. Uh, we received the grant. Value of the grant, the retail value is about $175,000. Um, so that now the, the fire units that respond to medical emergencies will have the, uh, they don't like the term Narcan because they, they call it a Vizio and that's, that's their, uh, their, their trade name. But we now have that antidote available in the fire department to utilize on the drug overdoses. And the last thing I have is um, I received this email today and, and I was asked to read it um, tonight. Chief Slack, kindly convey the sincere appreciation from our family for the heroic efforts during a medical emergency on February 27th. Bristol Consolidated Fire Company, Bristol Fire Company, Goodwill Hose Company number three, America Hose Hook and Ladder number two, Bucks County Rescue Squad, Pendell Middletown Emergency Squad, Dr. David Jaslow, Dr. Sonia Jaslow from Lower Bucks County, uh, hospital emergency room and the Bristol Borough Police Department. Without their efforts, our family member would not have survived. They are truly professional and each an invaluable asset to the entire borough. Also a special thank you to Borough Council for their continued funding of the town's rescue and fire operations. They didn't want their names or I know. anything given out on that. So. All right. Uh, anybody have anything for Harvey? The only question I have heard, the, the, the Narcan and the Vizio, whatever it is, what's the difference? It's the same thing. Actually, naloxone is the drug. Mm -hmm. um, the Narcan was like the nasal mm -hmm. that they were using. Um, 
the Visio is an auto injector, almost like an EpiPen. Okay. If you're okay. With that, gotcha. you remove the cap. It actually talks to you and, and walks you through the process of, of utilizing it. All of um, our EMTs have taken the training online <coughs> and through, the, through our medical director. Okay. Anybody else for Herbie? Mr. Uh, Bill, I know Mr. Pez has stopped in late. He wants to just. Good evening, Bill Pezza, Pond Street. Uh, I, I'm not going to talk about how, what a tremendous job everybody in Bristol Borough did because we've been talking about it for a week. Uh, this, 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 this contest was theirs, and they just stepped up and did a fantastic job. Reached out in ways. I understand you read a letter from uh, Joe, Joey D uh, uh, earlier. Uh, we saw him the Saturday after. He was ecstatic. It was just a wonderful victory for Bristol, for Bucks County, for the Delaware Valley, and we're all very proud. The reason I wanted to, to mention something tonight on camera is that on this week I just left the film crew. The film crew's back in town. They just made their arrangements. Tomorrow uh, they start filming the 20 finalists out of the 115 or so people that applied. Uh, everybody's been great about you know not making that 15 that final 20 list and, and cheering for those who did. Uh, they'll be filmed uh, on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday <coughs> to narrow that list down to six. <coughs> That's not you know, that's th those six people, when they're eventually chosen, are a cross-section, will be a cross-section of the team. <coughs> and as Deluxe has said time after time, the criteria is not just is it a good business, is it a struggling business, but it's also how can they, remember this is about a small business revolution, how can they sell, show a video series that would have otherwise fairly dry material, how to market your business, how to do your accounting, how to brand and all that, against the backdop of engaging stories. So they wanted, they wanted to select what they thought were some pretty engaging stories. That's their choice. They did what they thought uh, would be good, and that's great. But what I want to tell the people of, of Bristol Borough, because they work so hard, is that on Friday, there's a major filming event. Most of the filming is going to take place this week is private filming. But on Friday, there's a major filming event on Mill Street we're going to close the 1 and 200 blocks of Mill and the 100 block of Radcliffe. We're going to clear it of cars. And Deluxe is going to come in. They're going to, they're going to film an opening shot with a drone. Uh, they're going to be high in the air and they're going to zoom in uh, on, on the talent that's here. And then there's going to be a crowd of Bristolians. And as they pull out from that zoom, you're going to see the rest of the street and the river. It's going to be pretty cool. So I want to make sure that the people that work so hard to do this know this is happening so that if they would like to be in that, if they'd like to go to Mill Street, Four o'clock on Friday is when they'll film that shot, and then at five o'clock, the party, uh, for, so to speak, is closer to the intersection of Ratcliffe and Mill. The restaurants are going to be open. They're going to have some outdoor dining and things like that. We'll probably have some outside entertainment, and we want everyone to feel welcome to be there. And you know, the camera's zooming, and you're either going to be in it or you're not. But I, I want to make sure everybody had that opportunity to know and bring the kids because the kids voted. Everybody voted. It was just a tremendous thing. So I want to make sure everybody knew that. Thank you. And Thank thanks you. again. Yep. It, was a, it was a good event. Going back to bed. Take care. <laughs> okay. um, last time we met, uh, I asked that there be a letter sent to the DA. And it was for the residents to make sure that they are informed of the resources, um, even as early as this past Friday, uh, Saturday, there was another overdose slash death on my street. Um, <coughs> and it's just unfortunate. He was fighting the demons, but the demons won. Um, so we have gotten a letter back and response from the DA's office. They will be here Thursday, April 20th at 7.30. Um, it's going to be an open forum for anybody that's interested. But uh, they're going to come and they're going to kind of like Q&A and give us some information that might help us better tackle this problem. I don't know, you know, some people don't want to call it a problem, some people don't want to call it a disease, but it's out there and we need to figure out how to help our residents. What time is that, Becky? That is on Thursday, April 20th at 7.30 here. Everyone's welcome to be here. I'll be here. Um, I also want to thank 
Diane Kellum Colon and Kelly Bellerby. Now everybody goes through Facebook and I'm always on Facebook seeing what's going on. These ladies don't wait till it's Christmas, don't wait till it's Thanksgiving. They're constantly doing what they have to do to fill the food bank. That takes a lot. They put their little messages out there. You can drop the food off at one of their houses or at the shop on Mill Street. They make sure that that food bank just keeps going. And it takes a lot. And we're lucky. We're lucky to have women like that and all their volunteers that want to keep filling up the bank, the food bank for people that need it. So that's something I really have to say. Maybe one day we have to bring these ladies in and show them how much we appreciate it. Because it's not the first time. And I'm sure it won't be the last time. Um, also, not just being at the theater when this revolution was announced. A couple of times I've gone by the theater, especially on the weekends, and we have busloads coming in. Um, the theater is happening. Like People are coming in busloads and they're getting dropped off. And I'm a little concerned that sometimes when they're leaving the theater, they're mostly elderly people, and there's, I don't know what we can do if we can find out some type of schedule so that when they're letting go, somebody can go over there and direct. I, I, maybe I'm out of line for even asking that, but just for the safety of the people. Sometimes people are flying around the bus that's there picking up these people. I don't know, there just has to be something that we could do to coordinate the safety of the citizens. And also, um, to see if Mr. Fate, which the chief's not here today, can do a study to see if maybe we can put a crosswalk there. Because the way the street is, when you, you can come up Radcliffe and you can come down Mill Street and then you cut through Market, but when you're crossing there, you have to watch the traffic. I mean, it's crazy. And then you have people coming up from the parking lot. So, I mean, I've seen it and it just had some residents ask me to look into that. So I'd like to see what we can do about that if we can. Um, we also recently had a complaint on Locust Street in Bristol. Um, traffic's a little out of control. It's a quiet street. Those streets over there are quiet. Um, Locust, Maple, Mifflin. But people are flying up and down Locust Street and the people, I mean the weather's going to get warm now. People just didn't take a cut through. <coughs> Might have to do with the turnpike. I don't know. But maybe we need to see if we can send somebody out there and slow it down. And then I'm going to get in touch with this resident that had called me to see what else. Because she, she said something about doing a one-way, but I know that people can go both ways on those streets. So I want to, you know, look into that too. And then I think a year ago, I asked for a children at play sign on the Otter Street playground. And now it's going to get warm again, and we have all the t-ball kids out there. We have a lot of things going on. So, and I don't recall seeing a sign. I mean, they should know anyway when they ride by, they, there's kids there, but there should be some kind of sign posted that makes people aware uh, about the children. Um, I was talking to Lorraine a couple weeks ago, and we uh, were looking into seeing what we can do about the basketball courts, but I saw somebody put on Facebook, oh, come to the meeting, complain. So and so was playing basketball, they hurt their ankle. I called Mr. Dillon. Lorraine and me were both on this. The next day, barrel crew went out there, fixed all the holes, patched them up, and then we got all new basketball courts. So thank you for doing that and taking care of that immediately. The weather's gonna get warm. These kids need somewhere that they can go and play and be safe at the same time. You got new baseball courts in there? Okay. Nets. We got the nets. Oh, oh. Uh, oh that's argument. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nets, but we got new nets, Nothing you know, that. and right. we're trying, we're trying to fix it up, but uh, my bad. Um, and then, I think that's about it for now. I just am <coughs> really thankful that the DA is going to come down on April 20th at 730, and uh, I hope we can continue working together to keep this town going in the right direction. Thank you. I want to just check something before we're on that subject. Hi, 
Let's get back to the basketball courts because that's something that Lorraine called me about again tonight, and I know Betty talked because last year Lorraine and her husband and uh, Charlie and her husband and son went there and repainted yes. lines and did everything. My recommendation is, and I spoke to the manager today after Lorraine called me, is to, I just looked, Wednesday is going to be 63 and sunny, and sunny. Why don't we meet there as a council? And let's resolve this once and for all because <coughs> Mr. according to George and Mr. Dillon today, it does not need to be resurfaced. That it's in pretty, it's not in great shape, but it's in good shape. Me personally, I don't care if we have to spend the money to redo it. I think we're getting estimates around $40,000 to resurface the courts. That's without replacing backboards and all that. So probably if you had to redo this complex, it's probably going to cost you between forty dollars and $50,000. Is that blacktop, Ralph, when you're talking about yes. resurfacing? Yes, resurfacing. I mean, I don't, I don't know the technical terms, but I know a lot of the newer courts have stuff that... That's even way more. Uh, yeah. Well, we already got new court in. Like, it, I don't know if it's, if it's just colored blacktop or if it's yeah, just a, it's just the like, yeah. well, what I'm saying is, instead of us just keep, yeah. you know, instead of us just keep discussing this on, let's go there Wednesday. Wednesday, what time? You wanna... uh, I don't care what time you guys get home from school. I get, I'll, I'll, I can get back to Bristol by 3.30. All right, 3.30? All right, well, I won't be here because I'm moving right, Wednesday, right. okay? Yeah. But, yeah, that's why, I mean, the other day when I called Mr. Dillon, they were quick to go over there, patch it up, and do what they did. I appreciate but that. But they said it wasn't that, that yeah, thing, terrible. so. In Let's the sense of, I, I just want to, in the sense of if you're looking at it and you're not an athlete, you're not playing on it, yeah, it don't look, it, it don't look too bad. But if you're playing on it, and to the credit of our kids, and the, every time it's halfway decent out, they're out there playing. Those kids are out there playing. And it's, you know, I mean, there's... Look, if we got to redo it, we do yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, nobody's against doing it. So my theory is if it has to be done... We take the money out of capital improvements and we, and we resurface it. Yeah. Whatever has to be done there. But don't forget, originally these courts were going to be moved <coughs> over to, to the, the school, school complex. If, I don't know if yeah. everybody remembers yes. that. Remember they were going to put courts on uh, the parking lot on Buckley yeah. Street? Yeah, I didn't know that was going to be those courts. I didn't uh, know they'd we, be were gonna, we were going to try to work with them if yeah. that was the case and do yeah. something there. So, look. If we have to take the money out of capital improvements, it's for the kids, we do it. That's all. Yeah, because unfortunately so. we lost those courts too. We used to have the basketball courts at the school. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But they took them away and they so never replaced I them. I think it's an easy solution to the problem. We meet there as a who can make it makes it. We come back Monday night. If we feel it's got to be resurfaced, we make it an agenda item. Okay. We go out to bid, we get our bids, and then if we want to do it, we approve it. It's that simple. Thank you. Okay? Wednesday at 3 30. That takes care of the courts. I'll let you, I know you're not you're gonna be out of town. Uh, Dave, what do you have? Thank you, Ralph. Um, Mr. Dillon, uh, with, the, with the spring and summer coming, uh, I, I would uh, like for you to keep an eye on, on the uh, the uh, <clears throat> the grass behind the diner over there and that the water retention basin. Uh, during the construction of 13 there uh, uh, <coughs> with, with that high grass and everything that was there because we didn't know who was supposed to cut it there we had a lot of problems with mosquitoes in that area and also earlier we spoke a little bit and you said you're going to be meeting with uh, Congressman Fitzpatrick which is great and uh, uh, I know me and you are on the same page when it comes to Amtrak uh, I'd like to get uh, uh, Mr. Fitzpatrick on our team there to, to make sure that they uh, maintain and clean their properties and possibly remove those fence once the bridge work is done. And finally, uh, I'd like to publicly comment on uh, the uh, the thank you article that Mr. Pezza wrote uh, in the Carter. Uh, I felt that it was well written and a dead spot right on. That's all I got. Uh, the only thing I had uh, on February 28th, uh, Donald E. West passed away, and most people wouldn't know him just from hearing it. But if you went out to the 
lagoon or down at the uh, bypass road where the public works building you'd see him working on uh, quietly working on the landscape there he was a uh, he was 92 years old and I think he must have worked up until about last year oh. and um, I first met him when my wife was involved with the uh, Friends of Silver Lake he was out there working on trees planting oak trees planting pine trees and then he would protect them against the deer this guy was a, a metallurgical engineer and after he retired he became a an arborist and a con conservationist and he did all this stuff out of his own pocket with his own energy um, and he was kind of a like a quiet giant he worked at the volunteered at the Grundy uh, library one year to clean up all the the ivy and get some of the trees and weeds uh, you know taken care of he did work at Penn's Manor but I know he did a lot for the bird I would just like to see if we could maybe send his family a, a some kind of recognition for the work that he did for the borough I think he was one of those people never look for any accolades like I say most people wouldn't wouldn't know him by his name but if you if you saw him out there working he was diligent when he'd start start to work on on a project so if that's something we can put on the agenda for for month there for next monday nice yes yeah, absolutely yeah. tony i'm sorry Lou. no that's all i have tony um just to touch on what uh, uh david said about spring around the corner um i know that the um the grass starts to grow and our guys are very busy the streets the streets guys um i don't know what we've done in the past um can we hire some maybe some high school students or college students to help augment them and try to you know let them do what they need to do, whether it's the streets and the clean outs and, and everything else. Yeah, I think we else. did that last year too. It's, it becomes a, yes, but it becomes a union issue. I mean, the union would have to okay us hiring because you're taking work away from them or overtime away from them, believe it or not. But uh, we've been very successful and they always work with us with that. So I don't foresee that being an issue. Wherever we have to can we approach whomever? And well, maybe we, maybe we could say it's next. We could say it right now if anybody wants to put an application in for summer help to come up to the borough and put one in. Okay. I know there's just a lot of other things that need to get done, and I know, you know right. You only got six it guys. Up, it takes up much of the time. <coughs> okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Great. Um, a few things. Uh, you know, Betty and I have talked about this a number of times, and I, you know, I just, I think it's important that we realize about the um, the addiction problem that, that is happening. That first of all, for instance, the governor of Maryland just just declared a state of emergency in Maryland for that problem. So I, I want to highlight two things. First, I want to make it clear because I know I've said this before too that it feels like when you're living next to it that it's it's our problem, and it is. But this is definitely something that is happening. You know, nationwide, and again, the whole state of Amer Maryland is under a state of emergency. Um, and I think we need to kind of make sure that we weigh those things with all the great things that are happening in town. And obviously, there are great things. Mm -hmm. um, for some people, you know, the reality of their of their day, either having to deal with that addiction in their family or living next to it. Um, so I just think it's important that we remain cheerleaders for town because we are, and we we believe that things are going really well, and, and they are. Um, and we not get down about the fact that these issues are in our town because they are everywhere, but that we also realize that they're here. And I know Betty is really spearheaded, um, you know, bringing that to light and seeing what we can do as a local group to kind of help in any way that we that we can. So, you know, I, I want to thank Betty for taking that initiative. I think it's important in the midst of all this great stuff that we know. You know, we know that, that not everything's perfect and we're going to still continue to work on those kinds of things. Um, but don't get down and think it's it's just us because it really is, yes. it really is a national problem. Yes, it is. Um, also, uh, this is just a question for Mr. Dill. Mr. Dill, I know there's a lot of digging going on in the streets, particularly around that, that area of where the, um, you know, Mill Street and, and that general vicinity, as well as in other parts of town. I know Lorraine had mentioned this before, but... Um, 
Are they like what's what's the game plan with with that digging that's going on? I I, I mean particularly there was um. What's the name of uh, I don't know what street I'm th- talking about right now. I guess it's Wood Street. Is it Wood? Yeah. Wood Street. Yeah. What's 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 going on with that? Basically, uh, I mean, I <coughs> want me to catch. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> Basically, they're putting a new water main in. Right. From the plant down to the towers. Right. And we also took it from the towers down all 13. And that's where that was ripped up. Right. They're going to the Croydon and all the Right. So basically what they do is they put a whole new water main in, right. they're filling it, and then they're going to come back and mill and overlay. Right. Everything that had to be resurfaced is going to get redone. Yeah, okay, that was basically all I want. I, I, I was sure <coughs> I just thought it would be good to update people on the fact that those roads are going to be <coughs> refinished. In the next 45 days you'll see you know, brand new roads. For okay. um, also, I wanted to send, of course, my condolences to my colleague, uh, Lorraine, uh, she and I obviously work together in the in the East Ward, and um, she, as as we already mentioned, she just recently lost her stepfather. But she had also asked that I kind of convey a few things uh, on her behalf when it comes to the East Ward and things that we're we're looking at and working with. Um, uh, first of all, uh, you know, as far as just being enthusiastic about the small business revolution, it was hard to find someone more enthusiastic about it than Lorraine. Uh, I spent some time with her voting. Um, you know, for hours, as a matter of fact, and, and it was a lot of fun. But um, so obviously, she wanted to express her excitement with that. But uh, she also asked me to highlight something that we've been talking about a lot, and that is the Island View Riverfront North uh, project, which is certainly not in a place where any of us want it to be. Um, it is, uh, you know, it was really a positive thing when it got going. Um, and we want to support that kind of project in any way we can, but we also are, are doing our best with what we can with what is a private enterprise. You know, people buy land, they develop land. We as a local government can certainly make sure that they are getting their proper permits, that they are going through all the, you know, the engineering and all the things that need, they need to get. But when it becomes an issue between a developer and a bank, it really becomes difficult for uh, a local government. That being stated, we're not in any way washing our hands of it. We have heard good, positive um, things that may be coming. I don't want to express those because we don't know that that's necessarily the case. Um, but we have reached out to the Redevelopment Authority and we have asked Mr. White uh, for an update on that project insofar as he knows it because the Redevelopment Authority has been um, involved in that as well. It's, it's an issue for all of town, of course, but uh, we're very aware that a number of the residents of Seabird Drive have some concerns about you know, the state of that property and where it stands and where it might be going. Um, so we're going to really, really stay on that. And Lorraine has, uh, has asked me to express that um, in particular. Um, and then the last thing, of course, you know, uh, it's obviously a little awkward when <coughs> my father, uh, for me to sit here and just say, like, you know, great job, Bill Pezza. But um, I, I just want to say from a first hand basis that, um, you know, he never ceases to amaze me as his son. Uh, with uh, his drive and his determination and his refusal to accept, <laughs> uh, you know, anything short of of success. And um, I know those of us that have known him for a very long time know that that is his drive. But at the same time, what is also true is that he very much means what he says, and and he believes it, and I, and we all believe it. That while he certainly spearheaded this project. Uh, there were a whole lot of people that really, you know, needed to get on board and get on board quickly for it to be successful. So I'm, I'm very proud of him, but I'm, I'm as proud of, of the town of, of Bristol for doing what we all did together. And I really think it was one of the better couple of weeks in town where, you know, we're about to get into election season and I'm sure things will get heated up. But for, for a couple of weeks there, we were, we were all doing our thing together and it was great. And I want to also say just on the, being on the ground floor, not just from... You know, a council person that was working with it, a son who was watching, uh, you know, his father and mother work on it so hard, but also a business uh, owner in a sense. My wife is a business owner, so we, um, we, you know, we were jumping on board and we, we filled out the application like everyone else. Um, we were not selected, but, you know, that's okay. And the point is that while, of course, we would love to have been selected and it would have been a really cool thing, um, they are true to their word, right? They are here to 
pick the businesses that they think would benefit the most from them. We have, uh, you know, and, and it is a very much, hopefully, going to be a cross-section of people that, I don't know, maybe we'll even hear some businesses we didn't even know existed uh, when all is said and done. But, um, yeah, just really proud of town and really proud of the work that was done. So, thank you. That was great. Um, first of all, I want to say I'm excited for Wednesday at 3.30 to go over to the uh, basketball courts and, and check that out with, with the rest of council. Um, it's been a it's been a long while I, I feel that we've done something like that for for the kids and the youth and and like I said before they're over there playing or well, anytime it's halfway decent outside you got kids over there playing now I don't know how talented some of the kids over there are playing but the beauty is they're over there playing and I want to say you know I, I, I have to say I, I agree with Ralph in the sense of the excitement that we that we received and how we're feeling the pride from Bristol with the small business revolution. I hadn't felt that, and I was too young in 75, that was, you know, Ralph and, you know, some other people's generation, but the excitement that you feel, we've had that in the 80s with our basketball teams. We've had that with, you know, softball. We've had that in different, and like, that's the excitement that I feel and that I love, you know what I mean? It's not so much the things, you know, things that are great, like, we're, you know, we've got new stop signs and we got new, lights or we got yeah that's nice but the excitement that you feel from the our town is that that's the kind of thing that that motivates me and gets me excited and you know and I want to I want to thank you know uh, again like everyone said the raising the board group the committee Mr. Peddler who spearheaded it but everybody around I mean it was so exciting to be at work I had so many people were so pumped up like they're so, like they're winning it for you. You know what I mean? They're all the time, man. Oh, that's great. I was over there voting. I had my. I said, I said that's awesome. But it was, it, it was just fun. As you see, I didn't mean to hit you. Right? <laughs> but um, it, it's just, it's just fun to experience and go through it. And then that Friday, <coughs> I felt, you know, I, I want to go to the announcement so bad, but there was a fight in Atlantic City with Pat Sabatini you know, Junior, who was fighting in MMA. So he increased his record to 5-1, it was at the Tropicana, and it was just awesome to see. I mean, we got two things going on that, again, the pride and uh, of everything that was going on. At home, we had down the wharf, everybody was going, you know, crazy, excited for the announcement. And we're in Atlantic City with a, you know, a nice size group supporting Pat, and it was just, it was just, it was awesome. It was, it was awesome. So. I mean, th th that's the only thing that I have to say and looking forward to, you know, building on it, so. Is that it? Tony? No, that's it for me. All right, I got a few things. Uh, <coughs> talking about the roads, to get back to that, Caddick is the, the contractor that's doing the project, and I know Tony and Betty have both in that ward and there's a lot of concern about the roads are they going to get fixed but I had Mr. Dillon and myself and George contact Caddick and tried to make some kind of compensation for what they're doing they're disturbing you know streets and we're really inconvenienced with the whole thing so you know me I'm always asking for <coughs> money so I asked Caddick if they would make a donation to somebody in town and they said well it has to be a nonprofit organization so I thought about Little Lake so they wrote a check to the Bristol Borough Little Lake for our <coughs> inconvenience for three thousand dollars so right. I'm going to contact Stacy Dragon and uh, the Little Lake board and see if somebody wants to come up Monday night to accept this check and uh, hopefully it'll defer some of the costs for the kids or whatever they need. So I know Tony and Betty will be happy about that, but they did donate $3,000 for our inconvenience for what's going on. So I thought summertime's coming. Who else better to give it to is Little League. We just gave the Garden Club money, and we gave Raising the Bar money out of the, the town-wide cleanup of Comcast. So. As things go on, we'll pick different organizations. But I thought I took that upon myself to to give the money to Little Lake. The other thing is, uh, there's a program out there. Well, before I get into that, Dave, I wanted to just let you know, I called Tommy Wallach. I didn't forget about this meeting. 
and I'm waiting for him to get back. To, he said he has to talk to his union rep to meet with us about work. And remember, we talked during the winter. So I don't want you to think I put that on a back burner. I, I haven't heard back from them. So I'll, I'll reach out again this week and see if we can get this meeting scheduled with the, the union rep so we can figure out where we want to go with that. All right, the other thing is there's a program out there that I've been following. And uh, Congressman Fitzpatrick, former Congressman Fitzpatrick, and some people, <coughs> it's about turning renters into homeowners. So, and I'm not looking to sell any homes because I don't have any to sell in town. <laughs> but I think it's a good program. We have 1,600, I think, rental units in Bristol. It's a lot of rentals. And a lot of these people are paying rent. And I think this group will come in and explain to them how you can become a turn a rental a rental uh, person into a legitimate homeowner <clears throat> so I'm trying to get this meeting scheduled for hopefully sometime late April early May <clears throat> and uh, once I do I'm, like Betty got this meeting scheduled with the district attorney's office but I, I would like to try to get a nice group of people here and explain to them that you don't have to rent your whole life. You can own. And there's a way of going about it. And you know, I'll explain more next next week at the meeting. I'll try to have somebody here <coughs> who really can explain yeah. it. But I think that this town is fit for that. I think we have a good fit because we have a lot of people that are renting. Not that you're going to get rid of people renters but you could explain to them look you're paying a thousand fifteen hundred dollars eight hundred dollars a month you can turn that and you could become a homeowner so it's a program that's out there I really like I think that there'll be a lot of people in town interested in it and I'd like to see if we could pull this off over the next 30 to 45 days to have some kind of seminar right here in the borough is there anything that we could do as a municipality to incentivize somebody to do that? I know others, I think over New Jersey, they, that some municipalities have done something in the past. Western Pennsylvania has done something a few years ago. I don't know if there's anything. We, we looked in, like, yeah. in terms of taxes and all. It's not something we can do. Uh, maybe like a, if there's like a, um, I don't know, to help with a closing cost of, for low income, something like that. I think that this program is a good program that's out there and I think it's going to be very interesting for people that rent right now that to show up and I mean it may not happen tomorrow for you but they're going to lead you down the right path and show you how to do it and how you can become a homeowner a successful homeowner you know back in the the mortgage price and a lot of people they just gave anybody mortgages yeah. and you couldn't afford the mortgages but they were just giving money out and that's what caused the collapse back then but I think that this is a, a whole new process and I think it's very interesting and I think there's a lot of good people in town that rent that mm -hmm. really could become a homeowner so I, I think <coughs> it's a good program and I like to see hopefully a lot of people attend this seminar it, and, and say it just like as far as you know not on the same thing but I think that's a good program that look everybody has family or friends or somebody in there that's you know got screwed up on drugs it's a disease so you just don't look down on people I mean I you know yep. I know from experience I had a, I had family that you know went through these crises so I'm not ashamed to say it I just think that you know whether you're rich or poor or, or in between it's a, it's a sickness and I think that you know I'm, I'm glad the district attorney's office is offering this kind of program I think we should advertise it on the TV channel that there's a program that's going to be held here on I think you said the 20th yes, yes April. so it's a it's something that I think people should come out and you know you can save your child or your cousin or your mother or father everybody should know about how this stuff works so I think it's two good things in the making, and I think it's I <coughs> keep moving in the right direction. Mayor, save the best for last, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got a little bit to talk about, so hope you weren't looking to get out of here real no, quick. I'm fine. <laughs> um, actually, it, it's kind of a recap of January and, and February. Um, 
I met on the 15th of February. We had a department meeting in the police department. I know when I took uh, over this job, uh, a lot of the council people uh, had talked to me during the interview about the police department, about trying to um, make change, and, and there were some concerns about uh, costs and so forth. I'll tell you that the, uh, the police chief is doing an excellent job within the police department. In the short time that he's been here, he's made some really positive changes. Um, also, to the, the police officers themselves are, are working hard with the chief to, to implement a lot of these changes. And change is never easy, as we all know. Um, but uh, we're, we're moving ahead. At that meeting, at the department meeting, and I had waited until the new year. I had asked the chief if he could hold off until the new year to have this meeting. Uh, in the meeting, we were talking about the procedures, the actual daily operation of the department, uh, manpower requirements, overtime, uh, the fact that new vehicles, and also, too, that we're in the process of revising our civil service rules because, it, you know, we're, we have a lot of acting sergeants right now, and, and we need to get our civil service rules up to date and um, before we can move ahead on that, and I think we're pretty close to getting that done. <clears throat> also, too, I credit the police chief with uh, he's redoing a lot of the procedures. We've done the discipline, use of force, um, how to make a proper arrest. Uh, these are all key pieces of, of police work that, that need to be done. And the guys that are downstairs are reviewing these procedures. They're signing off on them so that, you know, we have copies of, of everything that we're doing. And it, it's not just the chief throwing it out there and saying, here, this is, you know, getting their feedback. We don't need their approval, but we're getting their feedback and their input. Uh, also, too, I'm working with the uh, police chief on a uh, applying for a state grant for reducing underage and uh, dangerous drinking. Uh, the state's offering, <coughs> excuse me, uh, $20,000 a year grants. Uh, put these kind of programs in place. Um, I think it's March the 17th we have to make the application by. But we're, we've been reviewing that and looking to see what we can do. Um, and talking about some of the challenges that we've been facing about drugs, uh, our police department is working very diligently uh, with uh, quite a few agencies since November. Um, I believe we've uh, made somewhere in the vicinity of seven or eight arrests. We've taken some major drug off the streets and at least one major drug dealer that, that we know of. Yes. Um, so we're doing a great job. From a cost standpoint, we're doing it, um, I don't want to say on the cheap, but we're, we're doing it well. Uh, the, uh, the other thing is that we've got, we made an application to the county. Uh, we got a, uh, a grant, a narcotics grant from the county. So a lot of the narcotics work that we're doing, uh, we get reimbursed for that overtime work right. so forth. Uh, this month, we reduced our overtime hours by 80 hours from January. Uh, in January, we had, uh, what was Whatever the number was, it was 90 hours of overtime, but 48 and a half hours of that is reimbursable from the county. So, you know, we're really working to try to keep our costs down. Dave, I'm just... Dave, I started. Hey, I got to say, That's what he wants to do. Also, too, uh, the chief and I have been working with a couple of county agencies on um, homeless and getting some assistance for the homeless. Um, We've uh, relocated five of our housing uh, challenges for homeless uh, to housing facilities. We have four in, in progress of being uh, placed, and we're doing this through the county through outreach counselors. Um, as I said, January, January, 90 and a half hours overtime, 40 and a half, 48.5 hours reimbursable. Um, I know during the month of January and the month of February, uh, I know Betty and Lou, I think, I think Tony, we had some concerns about traffic in town. Um, 
we put a couple different patrols out there. Um, we wrote one day we wrote 18 tickets, I believe, uh, relative to speeding. Also, too, uh, the chief and I sat down. I, again, I, I meet with the chief two to three times a week. He's tired of seeing me in here. Um, we looked at the truck traffic challenges that we were having, you know, with the closing of, of the Turnpike Bridge. And uh, the chief looked at uh, Chapter 15 of the Motor Vehicle Code, uh, sat down, we made a copy, gave a copy to all the officers, and said, look, you see a truck? It don't belong here. Pull them over. Stop. Give them a copy of this. And uh, write them a ticket. You know, if, if they're... We have signs that say local deliveries only. You know, state streets, we can't stop them on, but when they go down Lafayette Street, Washington Street, if they're over on the avenues or Garden Street, you know, unless it's a local delivery, you're not supposed to be there. And again, I'd like to thank Mr. Baumgarten, as Louis pointed out, um, he worked with us in, in getting his drivers to, you know, not use that, go out the, the way that they use I attended a breakfast last week for the uh, Advisory and Oversight Committee. They had a breakfast at Caesars, inviting the business leaders in the town to come out and have breakfast and find out what the Advisory and Oversight Committee is, which is the, you know, the, you know, when Gene Williams comes in here and Amy McElvain, and um, I happen to sit on that committee also, uh, for the 21st Century Learning Centers, which our learning centers are Snyder Girardi, uh, the high school in St. Mark's. Um, we've been able over the years to acquire $4.6 million for after school programs. We also run the borough's uh, summer program. So, but a lot of people don't know what the AOC is and what, what we're doing. They don't understand that we, we do this for education for our kids. So we also started a new program with the uh, community college. It's a, uh, a mentoring program and a business skills program. And community college and the high school. And 11th graders and 12th graders can now, they'll get soft skills training like how to go to an interview, how to dress properly, how to shake hands, how to ask questions, that type of thing uh, for, th for three months. And I think it's April and May. We're looking, and the reason for this meeting was to get these business people there to ask them to uh, provide jo job shadowing and you know giving some experience to these Bristol kids to learn about what other jobs are out there. Um, and that, that was, uh, we had like 47 people there. Uh, an update too from the, uh, we did the Martin Luther King Day of uh, Caring, where we hang bags on people's door and tell them we'll come back on Super Bowl Sunday. I just wanted to report out that we collected 3,000 pounds of food that was distributed through the three different food pantries in town. Uh, Herbie pointed out, I was at the fire board meeting. I uh, told you about the uh, Eviso injectors. Our guys are doing a fantastic job relative to the drug challenges that we have in town. The police department and the fire department. Uh, primarily, it's the whole fire department, but Herbie's group uh, are the EMTs primarily that respond when the, when the squad uh, is not in town or on these, also on these um, drug calls. Um, we got a hundred, as he pointed out, we got $170,000 in uh, Narcam or, or Visio in injectors, um, which I, I thought was fantastic. You know, and then his normal job, you know, he, he goes out and he gets grants for smoke detectors and CO2 detectors, which we've put in for another application for that. Um, I think that's a, about it. I, I heard Betty talk about Locust Street traffic. Um, I don't know, Greg, did Chief Henry talk to you about the Farragut Avenue? He did. Okay. I wanted to make sure that uh, we did a study on Farragut Avenue. It's been passed on to Greg and, uh, and Lorraine. Uh, yeah, we, we, we appreciate it. It's, uh, I was shocked at the number of cars. Yeah, a lot of cars. Yeah, 32,000 cars on Farragut Avenue in a day. I just, first of all, I want to thank you. For yes for all this information and uh, meeting with the chief three times a week to me means a lot. Well, uh, I just, you know, I, I, I've been here for a few years, so it, it's getting... No, but I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad that you're staying on top of oh, it. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm glad I made you're it. looking at the overtime. 
and I'm glad, look, you know, like today we had an incident on Rackler Street, there's nothing you can do about it. Right. But it's, uh, it's staying on top of things and giving us a report, which, you know, I'm glad that you were able to bring well, us up to date on too, a lot right. of things. Um, you know, with the small business revolution, you know, they, everybody's comments, it's great, we just have to keep this moving in the same direction. I mean, everybody's kind of said, said the same thing. You know, I think it was uh, in Bill Pez's article, you know, we've got to continue to listen to the music. You know, the music is moving forward, progress, uh, being positive. I want to thank the, also to the, all the news agencies, especially our local courier, and a guy sitting over there taking notes, Jeff Warner from the event, comes to all our meetings and he gives us good coverage also. And uh, I'm an old guy, I remember the, the basketball story and Jim Satilli. Uh, I also say that I haven't seen this kind of enthusiasm since 1981 when we had our 300th anniversary in this town. And we brought over 100,000 people to this town during that year with various celebrations every month, raised $200,000, had 400 volunteers. So I remember all that. This far exceeded that. Yeah, far exceeded that. So if we can keep that going, it'd be great. Thank you. And if I was, I'm sorry, I just wanted to add one more thing. Um, you know, I think that one of the jobs of the mayor is to not only oversee all the things that you've been overseeing, but also kind of be the cheerleader for and the face of this council at times when, when we're out. And you did a great job on uh, when... It's tough beating your father, though. Well, look, <laughs> look, you were leading the Bristol cheer and all, all that stuff, and, uh, you know, it is a, um, you know, it, it's a great thing to have our mayor and, and to be the face of those things. Should I finish with that? Doing a great job. We're from Bristol. <laughs> Who could be prouder? <laughs> if you can't hear us, will you all a little louder? There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just have one. I just want to give a plug to the... Uh, Rotary Club of Bristol is having a pasta dinner on Sunday, <coughs> Sunday, March 12th at Snyder Girardi. It's from 1 to 6 p.m. And it's $12 a person, $6 for children under 10 and under 4 is free. But the reason I'm, I, I don't feel bad mention this here is because this all the proceeds go to the Rotary Scholarship Fund. And for years, I mean, We've given out $16,000, $12,000, and the caliber of students we have, I wish we had $20,000 to give out. So those of us who knew we got filled up on pasta for a long time, <laughs> it's pretty, we make some money on this if we get enough people to attend. So if people can attend, it's a, it's not that you. One to yeah, six on Sunday? One to six on Sunday, and it's all the proceeds go for the scholarship fund, which is, most of the students are Bristol Borough High School students. Um, we've had technical school students in the past, even there's been a few from Truman, um, but the majority of it goes to the to the high school. And I was just trying to figure out in my head. I, I think we've gotten close to a quarter of a million dollars we've given out in the 40 years that I've been on the Rotary, and I know the Lions are pressing up against there. So. It's, you know, these kids can use help. Yeah. All kids can use help today. I don't care what their parents <laughs> do or make when you have to spend the money they do for college. Uh, it's it's helpful. <coughs> so, if you can, come And Louie cooks. <laughs> <laughs> He'll make your platter. <laughs> Tony, what do you have? I just had a question for the mayor. Sure. Uh, regarding the truck traffic, um, what, to help the turret, can we, um, thoughts on the, um, the safety truck stop, you know how you see them in other municipalities, sometimes, you know, I know we have a lot of truck traffic that shouldn't be here, if you pull them over and they, you know, I don't know who we team up with, you know, they, somebody, an officer that knows how to do that would do a, a, a safety check, the brakes and the weight and all that stuff, especially with our close proximity to the New Jersey, their weight's probably like seven or 80,000, and in Pennsylvania, only like 73 or 74, so chances are with them being overweight on our on our roads, I don't, I don't know if that's something. I asked Orange before to send somebody to school, because now you can do with portable scales and things like that, but. Well, it's, uh, an, it's I mean, if we want to do something like it, it it's, it's a major investment. One of the things we can <coughs> do is within the county, uh, there's a team 
from different uh, departments, you know. And but you got to be willing to allow your two guys to go out with that team when they're in Falls Township or when they're in Ben Salem and so forth. You know, otherwise, from a cost standpoint, I don't know if we could afford to do it. Sounds like you're giving that copy to Section 15. Yeah. Yeah, that, and that, that's, I mean, that we can cite them for, we can't do weight, but I mean, you know, if, if they're, our guys aren't trained, but under this code, it's very specific relative to the type of truck. And if it's posted, then we can hit them for, you know, decent fine. But, uh, I mean, it would be great to do that, but. Would it add to our revenue? Well, sometimes those trucks, you get, it's like a seven, eight thousand dollar fine, but uh, again, it, it's a, <coughs> it's an investment. I'll, I'll look into it and see what from a cost standpoint. Have anything? Uh, just, just one uh, item is on for uh, Monday night is a resolution uh, applying for a community development block grant. Uh, the application uh, was in your packet. That's for four hundred and sixty thousand dollars. It's for handicapped curbs uh, on Pond. Beaver, Buckley, and Otter Street. Uh, so the application had to be in by February 24th. Uh, they only gave us like a three-week period. I think Gilmer did an excellent job in the uh, the application. If you get a chance, there's some good information in there. But we just need a resolution adopted Monday night that we go forward to the county. So. Jim, on the handicap ramps in Harriman. I think all Wilson Avenue is done now, or are we no, missing a few? No, there's still a few, and uh, we're at the bid uh, on uh, at least one of the intersections. Uh, okay. You know, we're trying to live within that $25,000 a year. Right. But uh, probably one more year after this, and we should be finished with all Wilson. The idea okay. was to finish Wilson because of the high school. Right, exactly. And then finish Pond and Beaver and places like that, going to Warren Snyder and play, you know. But this right. was an opportunity that we, the county, made us aware of the community development block <coughs> being available. So nice. we can yeah. get that. It really would. No, nothing. Anybody else have anything? I get a motion to adjourn. Motion. 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 Motion